Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that used to work on a two-man assembly line creating Dracula toys. That's right, I had to make every second count. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top ten horror-themed games of all time. Okay, the Discriminating Gamers Top 10 Favorite Horror Games. Oh, as if I didn't know who was going to be number one. <laughs> you go, Dracula. <laughs> Once you go, Drac, you never go back. Okay, let's see what we got. Ladies and gentlemen, I was looking at the old uh, clock, and it has been five years since I did my favorite horror-themed games of all time, so I thought for this Halloween, uh, I'd go ahead and I would revisit that theme. So we're going to take a look at my top ten horror-themed games of all time. Just very quickly, uh, however, I do want to mention some of my favorite uh, that ended up in the runners-up pool. First of all, Dead of Winter, The Long Night, very fun game. Uh, zombies, Hidden Traitors, I really like that. Uh, Arkham Horror Final Hour, I actually just played this quite recently. It was a very fun game, um, kind of a uh, uh, you know a puzzle game. You got a race to get the uh, to get the uh, Cthulhu monster destroyed before it overruns the city. Not quite as intense as as the full Arkham Horror game, which is a little too long, a little too unwieldy. It's a different experience. It's it's. It's, but it's fun. I liked it. Um, the Cthulhu Realms game, which is kind of the Cthulhu version of Star Realms, which uh, you're playing with Cthulhu, but it's the deck-building game where you're attacking other players. That one was a lot of fun. And then, of course, uh, Axis and Allies and Zombies, which is just a fun World War II horror-themed game. came out last year, I believe, and that one was a lot of fun as well. But without any further ado, let's jump right into my top ten horror-themed games of all time. Number ten. White Hall Mystery from Fantasy Flight Games. This game actually, um, you know, of course you have Letters from Whitechapel, which remains a great game. Letters from Whitechapel remains a great game. Uh, and I would put that on my honorable mention list as well, <clears throat> but I figured I was mentioning this, so. Uh, White Hall Mystery is essentially a streamlined version of White, uh, Letters from Whitechapel. Letters from Whitechapel goes on a little long. Um, it's got a kind of a complicated setup, and... Whitehall Mystery just kind of cuts to the heart of the matter. It's a quicker game, it's a faster game, but you're hunting Jack the Ripper through London. And a uh, hidden movement game, one, one player is Jack the Ripper, the other are the others are policemen trying to find him. And <clears throat> it's fairly fast-paced, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Whitehall, Wister, uh, Whitehall Mystery. That is my number 10 from Fantasy Flight Games. Number nine is Dark Gothic. This is a deck building game from Flying Frog Productions. Um, this is a fun deck building game. Of course, you're, you're trying to take down the evil monsters. Um, but I like this game because you had the three different kinds of currency. You're doing three different, you're playing three different kinds of currency. But you've got the, of course, the you don't have the artwork on the cards. You have the the screenshots. They've got the people that run the company. Of course, dress up. Uh, I guess their friends or whatever in these different kind of colonial era heroes and villains and whatnot. I like this game um, thematically because it's not a Cthulhu game or a zombie game, but it's set in kind of roughly around the time of the American Revolution, shortly after the American Revolution. It, it, it draws heavily from the touch of evil board game, which was very loosely based on Sleepy Hollow, the Johnny Depp movie Sleepy Hollow. But I like that era, that kind of Washington Irving, Edgar Allan Poe kind of horror. I think this game does it very well. It's a very fun deck-building game. You've also got a dice in there that comes into play. But that is number nine, Dark Gothic from Flying Frog Productions. Yeah, let's move along. Move along. Yeah, we... Number eight is a game that I've liked for a long time. came out about 2013, um, which again is another Cthulhu game but it's a bigger, epic one. This is Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror, essentially, you're trying to stop the Elder Gods from coming back. You're moving all around the world, um, trying to trying to do the things you have to do in order to stop the Elder Gods from coming back. Um, I actually hadn't played this in a while until about a couple of months ago. We were at um, uh, game a at Chris's, and we played... Uh, uh, Elder Char. We did a live stream of Elder Char. You can see that on the channel from a few, uh, about two months ago. But I forgot how much fun that game is. It really is a good horror game. It's creepy and it's 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 scary and it's tense. And I really really enjoy Elder Char. That is my number eight from Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah, we knew that wasn't going to be number one. Okay, that game, that, that one sucks. Okay, all right. <laughs> and believe me, I know sucking. <laughs> number seven is, of course, a game that is. 
just so much fun because it recreates those B movie horror films you love. This is Betrayal on House of the Hill from Avalon Hill. Betrayal at House on the Hill is a great game where you're investigating a house, you're building the house as you move throughout it, and then at one point certain events trigger and you have the haunt. And the haunt is where one player becomes a traitor and essentially tries to attack the other players. It is so much fun, just the goofiness of it and the the the, the you'd never know what weird and crazy uh, scenario you're going to play. You know, you're going to fight zombies. You're going to have a witch. You got to defuse a bomb. Um, you know, are there bats? Are there vampires? You, you just don't know what the specific scenarios are. There's, of course, the um, uh, the expansion that came out a couple of years ago, Widow's Walk, which offers even more. They did the the fantasy version, Baldur's Gate, which is fun too. But I really like the horror theme of Betrayal and House of the Hill. So that is Betrayal and House of the Hill, my number seven from Avalon Hill. <laughs> Mm, kinda scary. I mean, kinda. <laughs> Number six is a game I just played recently, and I fell in love with it because it's based on the classic Universal movie Monsters. This is Horrified from Ravensburger. Horrified from Ravensburger is just a fantastic horror-themed game. Um, you're in a village, and the heroes are in the village. They're moving around. They're trying to... Uh, defeat the various monsters. Again, you're fighting, you know, Dracula, the Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Mummy, uh, Invisible Man, the Frankenstein's and his Bride, uh, Frankenstein's Monster and his Bride. It's so much fun. They've each got specific tasks you're trying to do, like Frankenstein and his Bride, you're, Frankenstein's Monster and his Bride, you're trying to get them to fall in love, to learn how to love. Dracula, you got to destroy his coffins. The Invisible Man, you got to prove he's there. It's, it's just really a fun, fun game. Um, it's a cooperative game, and it's a simple game. It's an easy game to learn and to teach people, but it gets tough. When you get those three monsters out there, it gets to be a tough game. So that is uh, Horrified. That is my number six, and that is from Ravensburger. Is it number one yet? No? Great. Let's get the number one. Is it going to be... Ebbing! My number five is a horror war game. This is Cthulhu Wars from Peterson Games. Cthulhu Wars is awesome. You've got the big, just a beautiful minis, biggie minis, um, which represent Cthulhu and the other monsters, and they have specific spells they're trying to achieve. So you're going and you're fighting over territory because you need to be in certain territories to do certain things to fulfill your objectives, and you're trying to get that done um, in the background of just this 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 almost light risk kind of war game. It's a very light war game, but it's super fun because of the different abilities that trigger and things you can do, and of course the models are just beautiful. This is an incredibly fun game. If you haven't had a chance to play it, I hope you get a chance to play it. That is Cthulhu Wars, my number five from Peterson Games. What? That one's like barely was scary. Like barely. Oh, come on. My number four um, is a science fiction horror game, but I think it falls into the category of horror. This is Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building game. Of course, it's based on the alien films, which were sci-fi horror, um, but it's great because this introduced the, the encounter system where you see those cards coming at you face down and you don't know what they are and there's tension and you got to scan to flip them over to see what they are and that can cause problems that can hurt you and it, it's um, my friend Zach says it's like that scene in Alien when they're like oh you know it's it's you know 10 meters it's 7 meters it's 5 meters they're closing in and you just don't know what they are because those cards are coming coming at you but it's so much fun and it's very thematic you actually play through the four different Alien movies I think they just did an expansion to it but I haven't played the latest expansion to it I played the one with the Queen which is pretty cool but I love Le uh, Alien, uh, Legendary Encounters Alien. I think it's a fantastic game that is from Upper Deck. <sighs> My number three is a game that is part of a larger family of games as well. This is Zombie Side Black Plague. Of course, the Zombie Side games are all a lot of fun, and Black Plague is the best. Black Plague is the best because you've got, of course, the fantasy element there. You've got the necromancer. You've got the uh, different types of zombies coming at you. Know, different things you can do. Green Horde built on that, and Green Horde's got a lot of good stuff in it too. But Black P Plague remains my favorite. I like all the zombie sides. I like them all. I like Invader, the sci-fi one. That's great too. But for some reason, I just love the fantasy world that was created in Black Plague so much. They do it so well. It streamlined rules, and I just have so much fun every time I play this game. Uh, that is uh, my number uh, three, Zombie Side Black Plague, and that of course is from Simon. <laughs> that one, that one is kind of scary. 
I mean, maybe I, oh boy, he's, he's getting close. Maybe they forgot about old Come Dracula. Oh, not. My number two game is another Cthulhu game, and this is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition from Fantasy Flight Games. This, of course, integrates the app. You've got an app integration here, which makes the game um, uh, almost a video game, but there's still, you know, physical components. You're moving your characters throughout the board. You're building the board as you're moving through it, and the app is telling you what to do. It's telling you about the people you meet. It's telling you about the story, and you're still rolling dice. You're still taking damage. Card effects uh, are, are still in there, and so the the game just works brilliantly, and it's creepy, especially when that music's playing and things are getting more intense and the monsters are appearing. It is, it is legitimately a creepy game. One of the creepier games in this horror-themed list I'm giving you because of those elements there, but I really enjoy it. It's fun. There's there's an exploration aspect here when you're exploring the house and you're learning things. The scenarios are generally really fun and, as I say, creepy. Really enjoy this. I've, I've had so much fun with it. I've played all the expansions. I haven't played all the scenarios, but I've played two or three scenarios from, from all the expansions, and I really, really love this game so much. So that is uh, number two. That is Mansions of Madness, second edition from Fantasy Flight Games. Oh, no. I, I think they forgot about old Count Dracula. I mean, I'm still relevant. I mean, I buy the people and I drink the blood. They're still scary, right? Come on, you guys. And finally, my number one horror theme game of all time. Um, a lot of my list has changed. I played a lot of new games, and a lot of the games on the list. There's been a lot of turnover on this favorite horror theme list in the last five years. However, my number one game, my number one horror theme game, remains the same. And that, is, of course, is Fury of Dracula. Ha! I know it! I freaking know it! You thought it was not going to be me? It's me, Cow Freaking Dracula. I know. Hooray for me. I'm going to go I'm love myself. Ah! Okay. Okay. Hold on. Cut. Fury of Dracula is so much fun. It's a hidden movement game. You're Dracula. You're moving all around uh, Europe trying to uh, evade hunters until you can set traps for them. And then just at the right time, you got to pick your moments to appear, to fight them, to try to take them down. You've got the card mechanic there where you're playing the cards uh, during fighting. And there's almost kind of a rock, paper, scissors element to the fighting. But it's it's there's fun and they're tense and there's a bluff and a double bluff and you're trying to pull out the right cards at the right time and then you're trying to get out of there and of course Dracula has secret uh, cards that let him move in in secret ways to try to confound the the uh, in, uh, heroes and I just love this game so much I played the second edition when I had it and then Fantasy Flight it went out of print and then Fantasy Flight came out with a third edition I got that and it was an improvement it streamlined it I really like that that went out of print and then uh, just uh, was it earlier this year or last year I got the um, the WizKids uh, edition, the new edition from WizKids, and it is awesome. It's got the painted figures, and, and it's just a great production, and I really, really love Fury of Dracula. If you haven't played Fury of Dracula, please do yourself a favor. Please find this game and and play it. It's it's so much fun. First time you play it, you probably want to be a hunter. Drac Dracula needs to be more, a little bit more of an experienced player, but it is so much fun. I'm, I'm talking to some friends. We might get together and play that again sometime here around Halloween because I freaking love it. This is another one. We did this for Gameathon. Um, I think we, we streamed. I did a couple of videos that streamed uh, this game as well. Check those out. I love Fury of Dracula so much, and I know you will too. So that is my number one, Fury of Dracula from WizKids. Fantastic! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Fantastic! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Fantastic! Sorry, I don't have very good special effects. You have to use the light switch. Cut. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us once again. Please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, leave a thumbs for us on Board Game Geek. We're trying to build our presence there. Uh, I got to tell you, I absolutely love uh, doing these lists, and I love hearing back from you. Please leave comments. Please let, let me know. Do you like what I'm putting out there? Do you not like these uh, my, my choices on this list? Do you like these games? I'm very interested to know what you think. 
So please get back to us. Let us know. And uh, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, what is the mummy's favorite thing to listen to on the radio? Rap music. Oh, I know. Sheesh. So dumb. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Jack knows that I love to fight, but I don't ever win. It's a fine line. Come, Dracula.